In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Taking the words of Jesus that from the heart, the whole issue of the sins of the heart, and a matter of fact, somehow all sins deal with the heart. So in a sense, every sin is a heart attack from a spiritual point of view. And so there are, just like in the medical sense, there are levels of heart attacks. Same thing with sin. So I told a little lie. Is it okay? No, it's a mini heart attack. So if I did a little thing, is it okay? And sometimes we try to find ways to, well, you know, say it's okay, it's not that big of a deal. But we know from the writings of the saints and we know from the scriptures themselves, every single sin is an attack against God. Every single one. And so if I lied to my spouse and my spouse caught me, what's the likelihood of my spouse saying, "Ah, it's okay, don't worry, it's not a big deal. Not very good. Even if it's something small. Because a lot of times these little things, they add up. I come out and go, I'm having a hard time. Did you eat before you got here? No. And you've got ketchup stains all over your face. You know, to do little things like that, it's like, but why? Why are you doing this? And so, in a sense then, looking at it kind of backwards, and what I mean by backwards is, let's start from the ending of the gospel. So, Jesus says, these are what causes heart attacks. Now we're going to talk about the heart attacks that kill. They're not the small ones. These are mortal. You get one of these, you better be in the hospital right away. So these are some of the interesting ones, evil thoughts. Fornication. Fornication is um, any kind of sexual activity before marriage. Well, a lot of people thought, it's, I thought it was okay. Uh, deceit, slander, put someone down. Pride, I'm better than you. Foolishness, envy. These are major heart attacks Jesus calls proclaims. So let's then look at what's the best way to deal with a heart attack. Let's look at it from a medical point of view so we can look at it from a spiritual point of view. From a medical point of view, if I am being told by a doctor that I'm going to have a heart attack if I don't change my ways, believe it or not, that's the first reading. First reading, God before the reading had come out and said, look, this is what I'm going to do to you in a good way. I'm going to send the Messiah. He will come. He will do a lot of great things. But before that happens, you guys are screwing up so bad. I'm not going to leave you, but you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a massive, massive heart attack. It's the kind of heart attack that Israel itself lost. The first half, the top half of its kingdom to the Assyrians. We're getting ready to have that. It was right on the brink of that. A hundred years later, by the Chaldeans, the last two villages, the last two parts, the last part of the kingdom. It's not much different than losing our cities and our villages to ISIS. It's almost as if 10 years ago, God appeared through a prophet who said, unless you guys change your ways, you're going to have a massive heart attack and you're going to lose your villages. You're going to lose your Christian privileges in Iraq. And so when that happens, you come out and you have to take things serious. So you go and you've got these little chest pains and you go to the doctor and the doctor does an EKG on you and says, I'm going to give you medicine for your stomach because you're having a headache. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense if, I, if the doctor gives medicine that has nothing to do with a heart attack. See, this is what Jesus is trying to say. In the sense that a lot of times we, I'll talk about myself, I fall into the temptation of I deal with a heart attack in a different way, in a completely unrelated way. It's almost as if I'll just come out and say, well, it's, uh, it's all right. I'll, you know, I'll just, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think the church should change. The church is wrong about certain teaching. Well, the Bible is old. I, I excuse it. Well, you know, I've got a little chest pain. The doctor doesn't know what he's talking about. We usually 
don't come out and say that. So when God comes out and God, Jesus himself, comes out and says, these are major symptoms. If we don't take them responsibly, we could die. Serious death. And so, from a medical point of view, and Jesus is looking at how people dealt with sin. How did they deal with sin? By washing their hands before they ate in a ritual. By not eating certain foods at a certain time. It's a ritual from a religious point of view. Again, it's kind of like saying, you know what, I'm going to have a heart attack, I'm going to put some gel that deals with my skin. That'll help my heart attack or prevent a heart attack. No, two completely different things. They have nothing to do with each other. See, if I am having a heart attack, where do I need to be? Hospital. Hopefully they can revive. Hopefully it's not that big of a deal. I mean, every heart attack is a big deal. Hopefully it's one of those minor ones. Well, do we have any hospitals from a spiritual point of view? Yeah, yeah. But then many of us act like those who don't like to go to a doctor and say, well, the doctor doesn't know. Well, you know, I can... It's, no, it's not that big of a deal. And yet, every sin is a heart attack. And yet the Lord isn't coming out and giving me a heart attack. The Lord is like the doctor, but he's much more than that, like a medical doctor, who's saying, number one, prevent... Number two, you need to do certain things on a regular basis. Number three, you need to take care of your heart condition. In a spiritual sense, the same thing. If I don't take care of the pressures that are putting strain on my heart, it's not going to be good. Same thing on a spiritual level. This is the calling of God. This isn't just like a warning, you lousy, filthy people, I'm going to do this to you. Quite the opposite. Because it's an attack on God's heart. Before it's a heart attack for me, it's I am a heart attack to God. And that's why I'm having my heart attack. Because I'm attacking God's heart. And I'm being rejected by that. It's interesting on a medical point of view, one symptom, there are many, but one symptom of a heart attack is vomiting. There's something inside of you that just can't stay. It needs to get out. It's a sign. It's a very bad sign a lot of times. And it's the same thing. It's interesting even in the scriptures where in the book of Revelation, in one of the letters to one of the seven churches, God says, if you... Don't change your ways. I will vomit you out. Why am I going to vomit you out? Basically, God is saying throughout the whole scriptures is because I'm having a heart attack from you. You can't stay. So you eat something foul. You eat something bad, and your system just can't take it. It just comes out and says, get out. You don't want it. Why? Because it's not good for the system. Now, is God saying this to all of us? No, he's saying, change your ways. Find me. I want your heart to be as clean, as beautiful, as strong, as healthy as possible. It can only be done through my heart, says the Lord. So the longer, the more we can concentrate on the beauty of God and not the external stuff. Because we can do the externals. We can put on the right lotion. We can get our hair cut and color them so that we don't look old. We can get and groom ourselves, and we can look on the outside as beautiful, as wonderful as possible. That's what the Jews were doing during the time of Jesus. And he's saying, look, you're doing a good job looking good on the outside. But if I groom myself, does that mean my heart will be good? If I get a haircut and I look clean cut, does that mean my heart is good? No, that's ridiculous. Nobody says that. Yet in a spiritual way, that's what we do. A lot of times, we groom ourselves, we fast, we pray, we come to Mass, we do things, and that's great. 
But it's not necessarily that every time I come and I pray that I am getting the benefit. Because as Jesus would say, if I'm praying to show off, if you come in and you see me lying down in front of the altar, all spread out, and you look at me and go, wow, what a saint. And I do that so that I can get that response out of you. What does that prayer do? What does that gesture do to God? Nothing. I look good. I might sound good. I might have people praise me. Maybe more people will listen to me. Maybe more people will think I'm a saint, which I'm not. And more people will say, hey, we'll, say, we'll follow whatever he says. Well, that's good from the outside. But it does nothing on the inside. Because it's actually, if anything, it's a sin of pride and that's a heart attack. So let's then take close attention, as we usually do. If I have symptoms, physical symptoms of pain and whatever, I need to get on it. The same thing the Lord is saying now to me. Cleanse, purify, and we have a wonderful hospital. In that hospital, the Lord is there to say, whatever is blocking your veins to my heart, I unblock, I open, and there is a better flow of that life blood that's coming inside my heart and inside your heart. Let us seek the Lord. Let us follow the Lord. Let us follow what the Lord says. And as we seek the Lord, we seek Him in beauty. We seek His heart. We seek His wonder and His joy to be able to, from all our hearts, to be able to say, Blessed be the name of Jesus, both now and forever. Amen.